Now this is a Taiwanese juniper. And if any of you guys know about the junipers in Taiwan, they're grown in a field, they have a ton of rotation, they're extremely hard wood because of the hot conditions that they're grown in. And this tree is no exception. I mean, you can see the beautiful twists and turns that the trunk makes. Now this is a little bit difficult to be able to style a tree like this because in different areas you have these really weird branches that sort of protrude directly off of the trunk, big thick pieces of wood, a lot of dead wood that's already been artificially added to the trees as branches have been taken off and shari has been created. And there's another little twist to this tree and that is even though there's rotation in the tree, some of the locations where those branches exist have become quite thick. So we're looking at the tree in terms of not just maximizing the rotation, not just maximizing the interest, but also trying to minimize those big thick areas and getting the best movement out of the tree as well. Because when we start to talk about twisting, twisting is one thing. But say for example you have a straight trunk and it twists the whole way up the trunk. Well, even though it's twisting, the trunk is still straight, right? And we've got to understand that when we're looking at this in a two-dimensional aspect, in order to maximize this tree, we've got to find the point where the tree does move as many times as it possibly can. And so where I've kind of been looking, which is it's a little bit hard to show you until I start eliminating branches, is right off of this corner here where we start to see sort of the base come and turn around here. We have this nice sharp turn here. We've got another little jog right here. And then we get up into the apex. Now the apex of this is also very complex because as we talked yesterday, standard approach to the way most of us approach bonsai is to compress the apex. And this apex has been compressed. But in the compression of the apex, notice what's happened. This thing has turned into one big, huge green dome. And that's not a beautiful apex. That's not a good apex, right? It doesn't show movement. It doesn't show direction. We're literally missing one of the pivotal elements to create interesting design with bonsai when we continue to compress. And besides that, if we look up into the apex, there's quite a bit of movement in this upper trunk that we would want to show in addition to the rest of the tree. So this design today is going to be kind of similar from the perspective of trying to maximize the extent of that line and show every single bit of movement. We have a more powerful tree today, so we're going to be utilizing our branches a little bit differently. And then inside of that, we also have the ability to be able to create a totally different design nuance than the one that we created yesterday. So I'm going to start by doing some branch elimination. <laughs> and then we'll do some shari creation and then we'll get to it, okay?
but now we can actually see the line of the trunk. And I'm going to rotate it so everybody can kind of see where we're at. Okay. Now, when I chose this front, the thing that caused me to choose this front is we're here. You've got a little jog in this area here, so it's not a straight line. We come back up in through this area. We avoid all of those thicker areas from those branches that were growing out of those elbows of the turn. We come up into here, and then the one thing that I wanted to try and expose was this upper area where we have more movement all the way up here into the apex. So I've actually elevated the apex instead of compressing it. And I'm removing all of the branches that were sort of initially created that were brought over other branches, creating this really faulty structure that's difficult to wire. It's never going to get better as a bone side. Those kinds of branches, when we start to use them in these really chaotic ways, get completely outclassed by the better branches. And so once we get to this point where we have enough foliage and we start this redesign, we start to pull those flawed pieces out of the design. And this is part of that design evolution that we kind of talked about yesterday. But when you look at this tree from any other angle, like when we start to look back here, you notice how big and thick those areas are. We get this really straight section in the rear portion of the trunk. Over in here is another opportunity, 180 degrees from the original front that we chose, but the base is definitely not as solid and not as quality from over here. So when we, when we select the front, we've got to go through that objective decision making. But the focus of this front was we get so much more movement, a lot of different changes of angles, a lot of different spaces between those angles. And in the two dimension, we have the contrast. But again, that rotation isn't worth anything unless the tree is moving laterally as well. We've got the best lateral movement, quality of all of the dead wood, get to see the apical region a lot better now, and we're starting to really bring out the potential of this tree. So it's just that process of elimination that led us to this decision. I'm not quite sure about. This branch that sits sort of in, off to the left and to the back had this horrific, horrific bow like this. So we tried to pull it in and change the angle and the shape of that branch. This tree is very, very brittle. And this happens a lot in the field grown trees because there's a lot of dead wood that starts to accumulate in the core of the tree. It turns very, very bright red. There's dead wood on almost every single branch where it's either been bent and sort of died back from that location where there was a little bit of oxygen that got into the vascular system. And again, these are a very, very hard juniper. And hard junipers are, are ideal because the dead wood lasts a long time, but hard junipers are difficult to wire because that hardness starts to move to the exterior of the tissue. The water conductive tissue starts to shrink and all of a sudden you get these very brittle branches. And the place where they're the most brittle is right at the joint where you have two branches that come together that wants to tear apart very easily. So we're having to be extremely careful. Every single junction and joint up in the apex of the tree when we go to bend it wants to tear a little bit. So we're just being very, very careful, but we still have to get the movement that we want. Now, as you guys can see, this branch has become extremely important and extremely prominent to anchor the design. So this is where I'm going to start setting the style of the other branches of the tree. 
I'm going to try to push in on the left side here. I'm going to try to run out on the right side. And you can see how I've shifted the apex back, elevated it so that we see all of that movement through the entirety of the trunk, shrink down the size of that apex so it's not that big green dome. And now we've got all the spaces to be able to appreciate the movement that we have in that contrast of the live vein and the deadwood. And the primary branch, since it's going to be so visible based on opening up the design, to have it just be this straight line and then accept that as the shape of the branch, not very attractive to a tree that has all of these twists and pieces of movement, our structure has to mimic the trunk. And so what we did is we separated the live from the dead and then we put some wire spines inside of that to protect it because it is quite brittle. Raffia, and then we just created a little bit of contour and pulled that away from the front so that you can see exactly where we want to create that window for the opening of the front of the tree. And this helps kind of define and guide the viewer in terms of where, are, where is your margin to be looking at. Now the next important branch is this one. to create the space and to really compress on this left side and elongate on the right side. And you know, when you guys design bonsai, one of the things that happens a lot of time is when you make a commitment to a design and you say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, my design's gonna go this way, right? A lot of times we don't make the commitment. Like we make a move, we say, I'm gonna go here, right? But that commitment in terms of that, that you know like when somebody's really committed, like they totally buy into whatever they're, whatever they're gonna do, and you can tell there's like a, a full-on investment, 
Well, bone tie shaping is the same because you can kind of be here and it's like, okay, I kind of want to do this, or you can be here, right? Like really in it. And that was the goal with this tree was just to make that full commitment utilizing the angle of this branch and sort of that move to the right. So in that commitment, it drove everything that we did in terms of reducing here, shortening the length, opening up the space, pushing out some of the length here, pushing out some of the length here, pushing the apex this far to the right. So in that commitment here, that apex had to come dramatically offset towards that branch for that design to make the full commitment. And that's really where you start to get into, and we talked about, it's a gritty tree. It's a really gritty tree. And that, that really gritty design with all that tension in it where the trunk moves to the left and both the branch and the apex just come right back on that trunk is a very, very tension-filled design. And I think over the course of the tree's evolution, now that we can see all of the movement and stuff, there's obviously gonna be changes and shifts, but some of the branches actually did come out having some relatively interesting movement, which was, which was kind of a pleasant surprise towards the end. But nevertheless, great movement, great contrast between alive and dead, and, uh, and a design that was committed.